you both for talking about the comprehensive approach the city is taking to economic development. Can we also touch on that comprehensive approach when it comes to infrastructure? Because as you both know, the city's largest CIP investment is on the southern end with the Regional Surface Water Treatment Plan, and we just had a phase two expansion there. We're also very committed to addressing the sidewalk issues, the roadway repairs, the bridge rehabilitations. So can you talk a, a little bit about that as well when it comes to having a holistic approach? We have been a very lucky city because we're a very young city. So although there are infrastructure repairs that need to be done with our bridges and our roadways, um, we, are, we are still in the very early stages of those repairs that are needing to be done. So right now, you know, just to kind of give people to um, a report card on where we are. You know, we are a very young city, so those, those repairs right now have been very minimal. Yeah, and you know, I encourage the citizens too to take a look at the uh, compre comprehensive uh, plan, but not only that, but the CIP. I mean, the city council, uh, you know, adopts the CIP, and on it, it has a lot of infrastructure projects. We should probably post that to our website to make sure that people if it's not, so that people can see it and, and get a good feel of it. But, uh, you know, we've got a good public works team, great engineers and planning folks, and everything from future improvements with our, you know, wastewater treatment facility to how do we expand our roads, uh, you know, how do we repair our sidewalk uh, throughout the city, uh, how we deal with trees, uh, because one of the things that's come up is, you know, uh, when when we're making sure we're planting trees in rights away, we want to make sure that we treat them the right way so they're not breaking our sidewalks so that we can divert uh, some cost savings uh, in some other areas in the city. All those things, I think, is, is well encapsulated in the CIP. Uh, and, you know, people should look at that. And uh, as we move forward, not only with this budget cycle and season, uh, I'm going to be encouraging uh, the council uh, here in the Neuron to also uh, look at their uh, strategic plan. Uh, they've adopted one in the past. We're going to go back and look at it again, which is normal, and then uh, overlay that uh, with some of the, the other infrastructure issues and needs that we have. Everything from roads, from streets, public safety facilities. You know, I mentioned earlier uh, you know, having new fire stations built is really important. Uh, and, and then how do we deal with our police? Uh, from a positioning standpoint so we can have high service uh, within the community. All that stuff is, in, is, is embodied truly in our CIP and uh, those items come up. We bring in the council to get funded. We've got several of them uh, that's coming as a part of this budgetary season, but uh, you know, we should make that available and really get the citizens' input in terms of their thoughts of it as well. We are uh, moving on to our custom amenities one of which we're sitting in today, the Visitor Center, which is housed within our community center. We also have the Quail Valley Golf Course and City Center and the Recreation and Tennis Center. Have you had an opportunity to visit those facilities and how do you see them fitting in your vision for the future? Well, those are great assets and, uh, you know, for a community. Uh, I've had, uh, the mayor took me on a tour and then also too, I've had the pleasure of going on a tour with uh, Council Member Emery as well. Uh, and I will tell you is that that's a jewel for this city. I mean, the golf course is a great place to not only do um, entertainment and events because of the, uh, the showcase rooms that they do have, but from a marketing and development standpoint, uh, it's an opportunity to conduct business. Uh, you know, it's a wide joke in, in the business realm about how many deals that are done on a golf course. And uh, Missouri City has a fine golf course uh, what I intend to do is to make that a marquee as a part of what we're doing to ensure that we can continue uh, growing the city holistically. Uh, and there's also, too, um, you know, an interesting thing about the course is when you, when you get over there, you really, it doesn't strike you as being a public course because of uh, the fantastic facilities and everything around it. And that's a testament to the vision that council has had and working with that community and keeping that up. And uh, I intend to continue being a part of that. So uh, Mayor Ford and City Manager Jones, we've talked a lot about the challenges that you all see the city facing as we move forward. Are there any others that you'd like to share with the citizens and that the citizens can help us with um, as we try to tackle those for the city? 
Well, I, I personally feel like the biggest challenge for our city is the transformation or growth from being a bedroom community um, to getting out of that mold. Um, and that it just really doesn't work anymore when you're looking at it from a tax perspective. Um, right now, our residents carry that burden of, you know, basically bringing in revenue for the city. So as we move forward, I think that that's going to be kind of one of our challenges. So, From a generational growth standpoint, uh, taking that next step mm -hmm. uh, to where your economy is more diverse, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and having you know, a more robust, not just retail corridors, because that's, I mean, Missouri City has some fantastic retail corridors right now, but uh, business corridors where, you know, we have a lot of executives that live here in Missouri City. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a recent study done by USA Today that talked about that most executives, uh, you know, want to office within a 10 minute drive from where they live. Uh, well, you know, we, we need to be using that as, as an opportunity to translate uh, that for opportunity in our community and figuring out what's that next step from a generational standpoint. Uh, and we're going to be uh, uh, touching the temperature of time, but also to the creativity of, of and the genius that lies within our citizens to help us define that, to figure out how do we do that. Uh, in my experience in helping cities go to that next step, as the mayor's described, and, and you've heard other council members describe as well, uh, is at the center of all that is uh, community participation. Uh, and, and in this community, uh, when you have not only such diversity in its race and demographics and population and all that, but just in a business space, you know, one of the things here that strikes me, for example, uh, is, you know, most, many people might notice, but, you know, 75% of the residents in Missouri City have a bachelor's degree or better. Uh, that, that's a big story to tell. Uh, uh, but yet, you know, uh, folks outside of Missouri City, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great story to tell, but it's a big secret, right? So how do we get those big secrets that are great stories to tell uh, out in a way that creates marketability for our community uh, is what we're going to be leaning on, um, you know, the fine citizens that are here. Because we've got, here in Missouri City, we've got some talented people that live here. And all we've got to do is solicit them in that effort. Uh, and, and, and they will share their opportunity, their vision, uh, and their skill set with us. And so what I want to do is to do exactly that, is to you know, work with some of the CEOs who live here, work with some of the residents who live here, who have expertise in, in marketing, in development, in business, and growth, and bring that experience uh, to home in what our future looks like so that we, as a community, move forward together. And that's, that's, that's how you take that next step and that next evolution to becoming not just a bedroom community, but you know a community that has a larger portfolio of business activity, and uh, that's 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 the way you do it, and that's the way we're going to move forward with it. And, and as we start having these community meetings, I want to encourage the community that we look at different types of development, mixed use development. We also look at vertical development. We only have so much land. There's no one's making any more land, so we have to make the best use of our land as well as looking forward into the future. So currently our shopping centers that we have now, they were developed on very old standards. So we absolutely have to look at the opportunities of, like I said, going vertical, mixed use development, and so that we not only have somewhere for retail, but we have somewhere to house office space as well as living space so that people can work and live exactly where they are and they're not having to travel into the medical center, into downtown, we can actually create that environment here in Missouri City. So we've talked about the brand, we've talked about sense of place. We're always looking to build toward the future and our youth factor into that. Uh, and they are our future leaders. How do you envision introducing the younger members of our community 
to public service and city operations. So I know one of the things that we're getting ready to start doing are Zoom meetings for different parts, aspects of the community. One of the things that I mentioned to Mr. Jones was including the millennials, including the Generation Zs, so that we hear their input. You should be building a city for the future. You should never be looking at a city for what's here today, because by the time you get that development down, you're now in your future that you saw during that present. So that that's one of my things that I feel like we really have to look at, get their input, what their interests are. I, As everyone knows who lives here, we have very few apartments in the community because we built for absolutely what was here at that time. Single family homing, homes were the demand, but we didn't look out into the future on once these families who had children and those children grew up, I get a lot of um, at people asking me, hey, you know, I grew up in Missouri City. I'm not ready to buy a residential home, but I would like to live there. So, but there's not a lot of uh, living opportunities such as apartments or townhomes and those condos, those type of things. So we absolutely have to engage them so we can hear what will their needs be in the next five or 10 years. Uh, to your point, Mary, I can tell you, I, I had a recent discussion with my son who's uh, who's a millennial and and he said and I was talking to him about you know buying a house and all that he goes dad and he recently graduated and he's now uh, he's graduated from college and is now getting into the professional world and he goes uh, I'm getting an apartment I mean I I watched y'all generation go and buy these big fancy houses and then here came 07 and all that <laughs> and a different downtown in the market you know we you know we're about having less space and more efficiency and uh, you know that that generation is uh, uh, is is different and we've got to get them involved and engage in a way that they can uh, take their futuristic thoughts and put the imprint on how we move forward ahead and and so doing the virtual uh, videos that we're going to be doing we're going to be going through a community participatory process engaging them in that conversation is going to be so important and, you know, one of the things I want to mention also is that, you know, I know now, you know, I have nieces and nephews and they, they're not even interested in getting a driver's license because there's Uber. So we have to accommodate how does, there, how does that work? We are a part of Metro. Metro has shuttles that are self-driving shuttles that can go through the community. And so we have to figure out that nice kind of sweet medium where we you know, address and not forget why people move to Missouri City. But we have to also remember, you know, five, ten years from now on making sure whatever we do, we can accommodate that as we grow. So I just want people to remember that. So as while we're engaging the community in different conversations, just make sure that I understand. I, I've been here for 40 years, so I know why people moved here to Missouri City. And, but we, we cannot be short-sighted and not remember that in five, ten years from now, we have another generation coming through that they're, we're going to need them to support our tax dollars. So how do we do that? So We talked earlier about just making sure that from a smart city perspective, we're rethinking about how we operate. Uh, you know, young people today, you know, they, they look at YouTube TV. Uh, you know, they don't have all the, the old cable stuff. They got apps. Uh, Twitter and all the other things uh, and you know we got to make sure that their creativity and their their innate ability to communicate is embedded in what we do uh, and and those those things we're going to be doing and uh, the mayor's dead on when she says that that uh, that's going to cause us to reimagine a lot of uh, not only a conference a plan um, you know, but what we do from a capital standpoint, what we do from a budget standpoint, but how do we involve them to get their ingenious and ideas engaged? So, I mean, everything from healthcare to you name it, they're just, uh, that, this generation here is just uh, looking at it differently. And we've got to, you know, we've got to uh, allow them to lead and, and get out front as well. And uh, one of the things that, you know, I'm going to be uh, looking to do is establish a, uh, a youth leadership uh, uh, committee here at City Hall, but uh, to also just to just to make sure, you know, we're looking at city technology uh, in a way that hasn't um, 
that that's more futuristic and all those things. I mean, they just got a different way of of uh, of moving, and we got to embrace that and, and bring them to the table. And that's one of the things I know the mayor and the council wants to do, and we're going to be working to do that as well. Norm, well, that's great to hear. I mean, we've talked about the youth component. The city's worked for many years with the Fort Bend ISD leadership cohort. Um, they've been instrumental in a lot of our strategic initiatives. But we also talked about smart cities, Uber, Metro. Uh, Mayor Ford is the chair of the 14 city coalition in this region. And so I want to just ask you briefly, how can we look to Metro as an answer to the challenges we face, especially when it comes to youth? Because as you know, those rides that they offer for uh, $1.25 are instrumental into our area youth being able to get to work and get home, um, but it also introduces them to the transportation concept mm -hmm. and how it impacts the city. I mean, well, you kind of hit the nail on the head with the rides that they offer. Right now, we have uh, Metro has smaller uh, commuter vans that they move throughout our city so that people are able to get to their get to the grocery store, get to their doctor's appointments. Um, they're able to connect to the larger metro bus system that it does not come into Missouri City. So, and, and at this point, we don't think it ever will. That's not something our residents have asked for or desire. So, and, and like I said, this isn't about displacing those who are here, but it's kind of been, when I mentioned how do we merge the old with the new, that was an opportunity to merge the old with the new. So we were able to get those vans that they are able to provide those uh, transportation opportunities. So that's how we can also, like I said, work with Metro. And then moving forward, I, I briefly talked on, there's kind of a five year out plan right now that Metro is looking at where they have self-driving you know, vans. Now, I know everyone probably cringes when, when I say that, but I mean, honestly, we, we, they're, they've already gone to self-driving cars and that type of thing. So that's something that we absolutely, as a partner with them, we will have an opportunity to utilize when it gets to that point. So to both of our leaders, another pri priority area for the city um, is bringing transparency to operations. So how will you all continue to ensure that we are transparent with the community at large regarding all programs and services, especially the city's budget, employee relations, public safety, and economic development? Well, I'm going to let Mr. Jones answer that, but to start off, I want the community to know that right now they can go to the city's website and they, we have a check registry that's on the website, the budget is on the website, so all that information is on the website. But I don't know if how many people paid attention to our last meeting, so, and I'll let um, Mr. Jones expound on that. Yeah, we're, from a budget standpoint, we've got several more meetings to come. We just really started having a preliminary discussion about it, um, and uh, we'll be posting to the website those dates uh, as they arise for input and public hearings and so forth. Um, but holistically, when you start thinking about transparency, you know, we're, uh, you know, we've got a really good technology base. We try to use technology where we can to make sure we're communicating. Uh, and one of the things we're working on too uh, internally is a new communications plan to allow us to improve uh, how we communicate both internally but also externally. And then the other piece is, you know, we've got a you know really good uh, city secretary who really prides herself in working with the council to make sure that we get, uh, you know, the, the right FOIA request and we're managing uh, that, that communication uh, back and forth between community as they need. Uh, documents or experience, but holistically is all about the the customer service experience, right? And you know the the last survey that we had uh, talked about the fact that um, there is an appreciation for the customer service that happens here at City Hall, and that the city staff has done a good job. Uh, we we do see some areas that we we need to make some improvements on. Uh, we're working in those areas to do that, uh, as I mentioned, not only from a communication planning standpoint, but from technology upgrade standpoint. The mayor mentioned earlier uh, the ability to be able to add, you know, pay machines and uh, apps and, and all those things. You know, CityWorks has a whole program on how you do that. Uh, so we're, we're, we're looking at all those uh, different things about using better technology and applications uh, combined with 
you know, how do we uh, manage our holistic communication skill set to improve on it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I really believe the customer is always right. And so I'm always asking uh, residents to uh, give feedback, uh, let us know, let us know we're doing good, and then let us know where things is that they want us to get better. And, and a citizen survey did a good job with that. But as we continue to have these budget discussions, I ask residents to engage themselves in that conversation uh, so that they can give us the feedback uh, so that we can make sure uh, that we're providing a good service uh, to them. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about, uh, making sure that the customer gets what it needs uh, in an efficient time that they need it. So uh, that, that's, that's the overall focus from, from, from operations standpoint. And I want to mention how important it is for residents to reach out to us with their feedback. You know, one of the things we had at the last meeting, a resident reached out to us, uh, there's a lot of CARES money coming through from the federal government uh, that's for the pandemic, for COVID. So one of the things that, you know, she wanted from us was to post that information online. So that was some helpful, you know, information for us to hear so that they can see exactly where those funds are going as they are, you know, coming into the city. So, you know, it's very important that residents reach out to us and let us know what your feedback is and stay engaged in this financial process. Thank you, Mayor Ford and City Manager Jones for joining MCTV today for this exclusive conversation about your optimistic vision for the future of Missouri City. In closing, can you all share just a little bit more information with the residents about the importance of us having community engagement, the new communications plan that will impact internal and external publics, and also the need to follow Missouri City News on our official city channels, which is something that Mayor Ford has been encouraging for the past two years so that our information is accurate, timely, and consistent. I just want to remind everyone, when you're looking for official Missouri City News, to go to our website, our official Twitter site, our official Facebook site, to get information for any type of hurricane information on the upcoming season that has already started, of course, uh, go to MissouriCityReady.com. And I'll let Mr. Jones elaborate more on our the importance of community engagement and other activities that we have forthcoming. Yeah, you know, we, we're going to be getting out, just going on listening to her, uh, getting feedback from the community. Uh, one of those feedback is going to be, you know, we're working right now internally on a new communication strategy so that mm -hmm. our communications is more centralized and more cost efficient. Uh, and that we, we think we've seen some errors there for mm -hmm. improvement. So I've got uh, both assistant city managers right now working with our communications director and, and other directors of the city uh, to come forth eventually to the council with uh, you know, a new plan on how we intend to reshape that. Not only that, but in everything from our website, our marketing, our branding, uh, and the whole bit. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be taking that to the community and getting their feedback. And uh, you know, as a part of the community survey, uh, that was one of the things that the community said that they mm -hmm. wanted us to do. So in an effort to be responsive to that, mm -hmm. is uh, you know, we're, we're taking a relook at that, see where we can make some improvements. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, we'll go back to the community and say, okay, uh, here's what we've put together. Give us your feedback on you know, whether or not you think we hit the mark or we need to tweak it a little bit or you know, what, what ideas you have, ideas you have. But uh, we're excited to be able to do that because, again, you know, customer service is always a number one. And we wanted to be responsive to uh, our community survey that, that recently was done. So, um, you know, we're excited about that. And that is an example of how uh, community engagement truly really works. Uh, you know, when you can talk to your customer and talk to your residents about uh, the services that you're charged with delivering and getting their direct feedback, it allows for you to home in and make things just that much better. And, and uh, we're going to be doing that uh, and then circle back around and get their feedback. So we're excited about that. Thank you for watching MCTV today for an exclusive conversation with Mayor Yolanda Ford and City Manager Otis Jones. To learn more about their optimistic vision for Missouri City and leading us forward in the next phase of our growth and development, please watch the city's website, MCTV, and our social media networks. Thank you. We value your partnership. <laughs>